Hey guys, what is up? I am Zone, and I'm coming at you again with a new video in my series on Inside the Mind of a Unicum. This time, I'm playing the brand new tank, the 121B. Let's see how it does. So as I load in, this is going to be an encounter battle on Murovanka. Looking at the tank comps, I see that we have more medium tanks than they do. They have a Kronvon. Very interesting that the tank just came out very recently. And they have some mid-tier, faster tanks, and some lower tiers. We On our team, we have some lower tier, more tank destroyers than they do. We have some mid-tier heavy tanks and one medium tank. But we have faster top tiers, so what I'm going to do is... I'm probably going to go the 9-0 line in the forest because it is a better place for faster tanks to fight, especially ones with armor like myself. It's going to depend on where our team goes. It looks like this could be about even split per se. I should be able to win this fight out here in the field. I'm surprised this person has the Kronvon already. That tank came out two days ago. So having the tier 10 ready is impressive. Probably uh, convert some gold in experience. Now, if this M41 is going to cross, I'm going to try to shoot him. I get my shot misses. But if you want to take that shot anyway, it's a low risk shot. Odds of him doing damage to you are basically null. Odds of you taking damage are also very slim. I tried to go for the shoulder of the pike nose on the I 7. Another low chance of penning shot, but I took it anyway. This T-54, I do not know what he's doing, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hill here to get some elevation. See if I can get a shot onto him. Being wary that they have big tank destroyers, and if I go too far over this ridge, I can get shot by them as well. So at this point right now, I'm just playing a little bit passive, trying to get a shot on this T-54. After re-watching this replay, which is something you guys should be doing as much as possible, I realize now that I should not have been playing this middle ridge to start. It was a too passive position. I could not put enough pressure on this T-54 or the IS-7, which were the two tanks holding up this push on the 7-9 line. I could have came out to the 7 line and played this little cubby right here, or I could have came around and put pressure on the IS-7 from the 0 line, both of which would have allowed our team to push this a flank faster than we would have when I was at this position and avoid shots like that. But right now I'm noticing that our team has not pushed up from here to there, which leaves us open to be capped by the enemy team. So I'm trying to tell my team that they need to move up to this corner and just be aware that we can get capped out. At this point, now I'm playing the middle ridge trying to shoot this I-7. Oh, now I see our, they're on their team. Most of their entire team is not on the 9-0 line, so we need to be really aggressive in the forest here. I'm going to have a shot in this T-32 momentarily. I'm going to take it. It appears he's AFK, and because I know I'm seeing on the map this mini-map, this IS-7 is being overwhelmed, I'm just going to take another shot in the T-32. He's AFK. Why not take the shot? Of course, of course, my shell bounces off of the front plate of the I of the T-32. Nonetheless, I kill him anyway. The I-7 is already dead. Now I'm trying to get shots on the 62A. I see that we have 37 seconds on a cap, so I'm going to be moving up very aggressively. We need to get a reset. This T-49 needs to come across. I'm trying to coordinate my team and tell them we need to get a reset as soon as possible. I'm moving back to the base. We need to get a reset soon. This T-49 needs to shoot someone. Nice reset, T49. Great job. Keep I keep leaving the 62 way to die to my teammates, so I'm driving back to the base field reset. If you're looking for reset angles, I'm gonna come out to this church right here. And I should have some shots on these guys. I know this from League. And I just reset the M46, but because he's not he hasn't been in the cat for very long, I need to find another tank to reset. I'm gonna aim to shoot at something else. And I killed the scout. I'm gonna cross here, try to get cross shots on the Kronvon and other tanks. I'm gonna use this ridge to create a miniature crossfire between my teammates on the other ridge and the teammates in this Tiger 2, for example. I'm 
gonna go up onto this ridge, start shooting these guys in the back, give them two targets to look at, so they have to pick one side if they want to do anything. I take out this MP1. I can't even tell I'm gonna hit right now. How many tanks to shoot? Patton is making it hard for me to push over. As a 268 looking directly at me, so I'm backing up. Okay, he's dead now. Now I'm pushing over. I'm gonna keep using this ridge to create crossfires on the enemy team. Now goes the 268. And we pretty much have these guys bottled up right now. I'm using my positional advantage on this ridge line to keep them looking two different directions. I'm gonna try and take out this Kronvon right here. I'm gonna eliminate one more tank for our team to kill. I bounced. And down goes their team. Our team did a great job getting that reset. Kudos to the T49 or whoever it was that got that reset. They did a very good job at it. Tiger 2, please. Tiger 2, please. Tiger 2, please. That was a great job on our team. They did a good job getting a reset over here, and we did a good job seeing our overmatch on the 8-9 line and then pushing it as soon as possible once we saw that all the tanks on the side of it, uh, the 3 line had been lit, and the T-49 on our team did a good job uh, getting the reset from this hill. He allowed us to all to come from the 9-0 line to surround them on the cap, and once we had them surrounded, it was shooting fish in a barrel, and the round was over. I don't know who got that reset. I believe it was the T-49. Got five capture points, defense points. Maybe it was the T-22. Someone on our team got a good resets. Maybe it was the T-20 prototype. If that was him, then great job to him. I'm not sure who it was, but whoever did get those resets, you guys did a great job. That allowed the rest of the team to move in from the 9-0 line and take control of the map and bottle them in to the cap. Let's play another one and see what happens. Alright, so it looks like we have a standard battle on Mountain Pass. I see that there's a lot of medium tanks on their team right away. I see that we have, they have four top tier medium tanks, and we have three. And we have a lot of low tier tank destroyers. That is unusual to say the least. Which worries me a little bit because this is a map where you need to get aggressive from the start. The 1 2 3 on is pretty much the best way to go. Sometimes crossing the water is advisable or going across the bridge, but the ice road is basically useless. It takes too long to go through this, and you can get held up in this corner by a couple tank destroyers back here. So, best way to go on this map for 90% of your games is the 1 2 3 line. If you're going to go to the bridge, it's advisable to push across right away. Be aggressive on it. Don't just stay there watching the bridge. And we have a lot of tank destroyers going up to the base, looks like on the first part, which is really worrisome. What I don't like right now is that we have so many tanks that are still slow and near the base. We have a lot of tanks just camping on the, the little ridge line by our base. It looks like an entire platoon of tier 8 tank destroyers just going to sit on this base. So I need to be aware of that and know that I'm probably not going to have enough uh, tanks here to support me in, on this flank. Most likely I'm going to have to pull back, so I'm not going to be aggressive, go to, go to the corner here. I'm just going to stay right here and watch and see if I can shoot something as it crosses. They had a medium tank just push the ice road. So now I see that and I realize that there's going to be much, much less tanks in this flank. So I can be aggressive on this and see my opportunity to see. I'm going to poke on this corner and see if I see other tanks. I'm not seeing anything. I'm gonna go around this corner. Bounce off the side of a 103 and the flat side of it. Cool. Try to go for the track shot, but I missed it. Looks like the scent hit it, which is good. I'm looking, keep looking, just in case. There's no one here to challenge me. I'm gonna keep pressuring this corner. There's one arty, which I gotta be really careful about. 
but there's something I was looking for, like a 704. Fired. That just pen him once, man. As I don't pen him. Now we have a TV 4 to deal with over here. I don't want to expose my lower corner, like, and you just fired. Point two. What are you doing, buddy? He's pulling away. Yeah, he's gonna drive one away. So, take another shot into him. Tried to get a track shot, but I missed the drive wheel. Now I'm gonna start trying to focus the CDC and the T49. DC was smart, he pulled back. Cracked him. Now I'm just trying to get a shot in this kill shot in this T49. Oh no. Oh, I see the 704 behind me just fired. I'm gonna get a shot into him, try and track him. He's tracked again, and tracked again. So hopefully the sun doesn't block me from shooting him. And dead. I'm trying to get the kill shot on this T49. It looks like we're losing the base, so I hope those guys that were camping base before can protect it. Use my armor to... It was at this moment right here, guys, that I realized after looking back the replay, I should have pushed over and killed this T-54 right as the CDC fired. I needed to be more aggressive and get back to the base sooner than what I was doing, and that was a mistake of my own. It may not have changed the outcome of the game, but it sure would have given our team a better chance to win. Bounce him and the CDC. We really need that uh, T-49 to die. So, uh, and the CDC is being annoying. Cracked him again. So we're losing this base, and unfortunately it's kind of upsetting that we're losing the base considering we had so many tanks still there. But there's not a lot I can do in this situation right now. This game is basically over. We've lost, we're down too many tanks. I'm gonna try and kill this T-40, not T-54. And maybe try to be able to get a cap reset. I'm gonna kill this T-49, and then maybe I can get back into base in time. Hopefully these guys are low in hit points. Doesn't appear this way, we're probably gonna lose this. And he hits a rack. This game is over. Try my best, boys. We had too many tanks that stayed in the base. And they made their, I get a hint to their team, their platoon did a really good job. They decided that they were gonna go straight up ice rub right away and push and be aggressive and take our base before we had any time to react. Well played to their team. The bummer that we couldn't win. We did everything that we could in their flank. That was There was not much we could have done individually to make that game a win for our team. As you can see, we had 4,500 damage. And that platoon that stayed at base, there's two of them got zero damage the whole game. One, the other one got very low damage. If they had been more aggressive, maybe they had gone to the ice road instead of camping the, the middle, the base hill. They might have been able to do more and slow down this triple medium platoon. Kudos to them for making the aggressive play and capturing the one for the team. That about wraps it up, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.